Howdy, howdy. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. Welcome back to this episode of Gap Tech. All right, before we get started, let's take a minute to thank the godfather of To Give a Knife, Take a Knife, the man himself, JT from JT's Life Life. Let's get a round of applause, everybody. Go out there. All right, before we get started, we're gonna take a quick look at some of the previous players of the game in no particular order. We've had Carlos, the DCS crew leader. Now this is a guy who really knows the stuff he got in and uh, made some really good choices. We had Stasa, the knife therapist himself, a real veteran of the knife game. We had Sean from Gear Towards Gear, a great member of the community, somebody who really embodies the spirit, a steward of the community, if you will. And then next up, we had the Visual Bambino, everybody's favorite boy from the NYC, Ray from Everyday City Carry. Next up, we had Big Hitter Brian, the sliciest mofo, your mama didn't want you to know. All right, now those previous players have all played the game. They made some really good choices, doing some really interesting knives. Now let's catch up with our next player, J Jack Bar Jack Farmboy got in on? Who let him in? Follow the script? Okay. Jack Farmboy is a self-described, mild-mannered, small-handed, simple-minded, budget-loving knife enthusiast. Now this is a guy who really has a penchant for talking too long and saying the word so too many times. All right, welcome back, guys. So today we are doing the Give a Knife, Take a Knife, put on by the man JT uh, over at JT's Knife Life. A uh, really interesting, cool project where uh, it starts out with six knives and it goes to different folks on YouTube and Instagram and the community. And what happens is we get the six knives, we get to look at them, play with them, uh, experience them, and then we get to pick a knife. So at the end of this video, one of these knives will be mine, with the only caveat being that I'm going to replace it with another knife. So when it goes on to the next person, there's still six knives there that they get to kind of pick from and choose from. So everybody's different in the community, we all have different preferences, and that'll kind of dictate and determine how this is going to go for myself. So big thank you, I'm really glad to be a part of this. I saw the first one he did, it was an interesting video, I really love seeing everybody's reasonings uh, behind picking a knife, and I'm really glad I get to have a shot at it. So once again, big thank you to JT and all of the other channels and folks that have been playing along. So if you've been following this, um, we're going to get started, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about each knife, what I like, what I don't like, and why I'm going to make my selection, and then I'll reveal which knife I'm going to be putting in. Alright guys, so let's, uh, let's get started here and just uh, start going through each one of them. So this is a Stedman knife. Uh, I've actually had one of their knives before. It was also this JG10, had some fantastic action. And this one has nice authoritative thwack when you open it. Um, comes down real nice as well. It's got this great JG10, this awesome, like this black wash on this blade that I haven't really seen before. This is very interesting and unique and I really like that. It's got this like flathead hardware that is uh, that I've seen on a few knives but not too many. And yeah, great lock bar access. And overall, not a bad knife. Lanyard hole, I'm a big lanyard fan. Um, pocket clip isn't my favorite, but overall, the reason this knife will not be staying with us is because small hand, big knife. Uh, gives me a little bit of an inferiority complex. Um, I don't tend to carry big knives. Uh, it's not something I usually keep in my collection, just for the fact that uh, I don't need them, and my hand doesn't require, um, look, <laughs> look how much is left on the bottom of that, that's silly. Um, but yeah, small hands, big knife. So this one is going to be uh, pulled out early in the round, but not a bad knife. Interesting, something that you don't really see too much of. So we're going to take, go ahead and put that one to the side. All right, so we're reshooting this because this clip didn't save for some reason. But my next elimination in the spirit of knives that are just kind of too big for me is going to be the Tucson. Now this is actually a pretty cool knife and I really like the design of it. Let's take a look at it. So I actually really like this nice clean design, simple lines. It's got this really cool anno on the titanium, a uh, nice flipper tab, and just a very unique cool blade shape that I actually really like. But it's just going to come in a hair too big for me. One cool thing about this uh, Tucson, or a couple cool things actually, is just how unique it is and out of focus it is. There we go. Um, it's got a very nice pocket clip. Um, it is silly smooth. Just watch this. Just boom. Nice deployment and nice... Whoop. Not today, not bleeding on camera today. Very interesting, very just a uh, very nice knife and one that caught my eye when I saw JT was putting it in. I'm glad I got a chance to check it out. Um, very well done overall, but too big for me and not gonna make it past this round. So this one is gonna be eliminated and uh, yeah, let's get on to a few more. All right, let's take a look at the next knife that'll be coming off the table and that one is gonna be the case. So let's take a look at it real quick. 
So this is actually a beautiful knife. Uh, I love this color of the bone handle, this green that fades into this yellow. Um, I like the brass shield and pins. And it's just, it's actually a good example. Nice fit and finish all the way around. And the one part where it loses me is going to be the pen style blade. I'm not a big fan of pen style blades. Um, I have a few traditionals and I usually like something a little more substantial um, and a little more utility. So that's kind of where it loses me. I'll show you a couple examples of what I have for my traditionals. I have like the Lion Steel. I have the uh, Real Steel Luna here. Uh, let's see. The Gerber 39 series and you know the buck uh, square here so those are kind of what I tend to lean towards when it comes to traditional knives I'm not a big fan of the pen style blades so that's where this one loses me but overall a very nice knife and I don't think that this one will stay in the, the rotation forever I know some of the comments say oh nobody likes the case well I think everybody has liked the case but it's just not what they were looking for so we're gonna go ahead and close this up and we're gonna set this one to the side all right, so now here we are to the final three, and then this is where it got hard for me. Uh, these are the three knives I focused on in the last couple weeks, uh, playing around with them, and really putting them up against my collection of what fills the niche maybe that it's not being filled, or what represents what I look for in a knife. And if I left with either of these knives or any of these knives, I would be really happy. So these are the final three, which is really interesting because I, I stated that you know I'm a budget guy at heart, and these really kind of go a little bit veer towards outside that budget realm. But maybe that's kind of why I like them a little bit, is they're interesting and they're unique compared to what I have. So we're going to touch on these knives really quickly, and then we're going to go eliminate one more, and then we'll go down to the final two. So this is a Concept Knives, and this is a prototype that they have going on. Daily Carry Solutions put this in. He got a chance to pick this up from them. Uh, one of the blade shows, I believe. And it's, it's wonderfully executed. We'll take a closer look in just a second. Uh, we have a Browse here. Uh, this is actually one that comes with a certificate of authenticity. It's a numbered model. Um, very interesting. Uh, really kind of fits into what I'm looking for. And then we have kind of the curveball. And then that's going to be the Menavade, I believe is the way it's pronounced. Uh, stub. And this one is very unique, very interesting. And kind of really outside my wheelhouse from what I normally look at. So with that aside, what's coming out? Now, when I first started watching the series, I told myself I wasn't going to watch because I wanted to be surprised when these knives got back to me. But, you know, quarantine boredom, I actually ended up watching all the videos. Um, the one that I thought I was going to be walking away with was the Browse. And this really, um, let's take a quick look real quick. This really has a lot of what I look for in a knife. Clean, simple design. Um, it's got a nice flipper tab that I actually like. It's got good jimping. Uh, the ergos for my hand size are really good, and it's just a well-executed knife. Uh, it's a limited or a numbered edition. This was one that I thought I was going to be walking away with, or I was hoping that when it got to me that this would still be available. But this one's going to be coming out because it kind of fits what I typically go for, and that's you know maybe something like this. You know, there's a, there, there's some similarities to be had there. I really love my dividend. And that's already kind of feeling that and even something like something like that and you know they're very similar you know there's there's a lot of differences but they're, they're really similar in what they do and how they function and I realized you know I already have something like this and I have an opportunity to uh, experience these new knives that I don't have uh, that I haven't had access to and maybe won't get a chance to check out again with that said the browse will be coming out and I really really thought this was gonna be the one that I would walk away with so we're gonna be pulling this one out now that we're down to our final two, let's open them up and just kind of look at them and see what they're offering individually. So you have this big kind of like just stubby, chunky, big small knife, and then you have the Concept Knives prototype. And this one is executed very nicely. I love that inlay. Um, the action's really good. A little bit softer on the detent. Um, show side is good. It's got this orange peel on the titanium that I never had on a knife, and I actually really like this. Enjoy it very much. Has the lanyard. And yeah, just overall a wonderfully executed knife. Next up is going to be the Menavade Stub. Um, this one, uh, pretty simple design, very interesting. It's got the brass standoffs, um, wonderful action. You can hear that hopefully. The detent is phenomenal. Listen to this. Just a nice, nice, interesting, chubby little knife. And it kind of fits my hand okay. And uh, yeah, it's interesting and I like it. Something that I've never experienced before and I might not get a chance to experience again. So with that said, which one of these is going to be the winner? So let's talk about this one. Um, this one actually loses me on one point only, and that is going to be the blade shape. I am not a big fan of that. Uh, it, 
to me, it doesn't really fit what I like. It's not my style. And that's kind of interesting because JT loves this blade shape. It just goes to show you, you know, different strokes for different folks. Um, Everybody is different for what they look for in a knife and their personal preferences. And yeah, just the blade shape on this one loses me. It's a very, very close second. And somebody's going to be very happy with this knife. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to go pretty quickly as we go through some of the other channels who are going to be checking these out. That obviously means that the winner is going to be the Menevade Stub. And that was kind of something I was like, do I really want to pick it? Because it's probably, I think it's the most expensive out of these. They're hard to find. And it's not something that really fits my collection. But I just kind of fell in love with it as I got to play with it and use it. And it's interesting and unique. So, you know, that kind of leaves a little bit of a burden on, well, what are you going to put in to replace that, right? So let's talk about what I'm going to be putting in to replace that. This one's going to be staying with me. Um, it's actually what I like about it is it's per perfect for the fifth pocket. I love the titanium. I told you guys I was on a titanium kick lately. I like this short stubby utility blade. I love the action on it. Uh, it doesn't have a pocket clip, which is okay with me because I'm going to throw a lanyard on here with a nice pretty bead. And, and yeah, this will be something that I'll probably carry quite a bit, even though it is an expensive piece. Um, something I haven't had a chance to really experience in my collecting hobby so far. That's the winner. What are we going to put in to replace this? Well, let's put that to the side real quick. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm putting in. Uh, one of the guys in this is the Lawn Ranger. He was in the group chat. He was saying that we have a flipper problem in the to give a knife, take a knife, and he is right. Everything with the exception of the case is a flipper. So I took it upon myself to hopefully um, alleviate some of that. And I've got a knife that's a non-flipper that I'm going to be putting in. So let's take a look at what I'm putting in. The thing I'm going to be putting in is the Real Steel Citus. Now this is a knife um, that's wonderfully executed. It's something that they did in collaboration with Poltergeist Blade Works. And I love their collabs that they do. I love all the models. You see I have the Real Steel Luna. Um, it's got this nice flat ground D2 blade. Let's take a look. These beautiful um, carbon fiber um, shredded handles contoured very nicely. And uh, these are actually impregnated. They glow blue. Um, when put under light, maybe I'll put a clip in over top of this. Um, this isn't the ideal condition to do it. We've got a nice deep carry pocket clip. We've got the Poltergeist hardware. And it is pretty much brand new out of box, so it's still breaking in. But you can spidey flick it. You can slow roll it open. And it's not dropping shut quite yet, but I'm pretty sure that will uh, that'll break in very nicely. So, you know, Real Steel along with like QSPR, probably my two favorite Chinese brands. I love the execution and the designs that they have. Um, they never disappoint, at least for me. And I think that is something that will make somebody very happy. And it offers up something that's a little bit more of a budget option. Because um, some of these knives are getting kind of expensive. And it also takes care of the flipper problem. So that's going to be the knife that I'm going to be putting in. If you, guys, uh, if you guys found this interesting, I'm kidding. I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, what the hell? You took the most expensive knife and you're only putting in a budget knife? Well, not exactly. So, hold on. Let's take a look at something else. I'm also going to be putting in... The Dam Designed Wraith. Now this is something, some of you guys know I did um, some work for Dam Designs when they were launching the Ani. I helped them launch that knife. Um, did some PR work and some media work for them. And yeah, so that's all done. Um, it launched successfully, so I'm not really doing anything with them anymore. But one of the things I did uh, end up getting a chance to have is, a, um, is one of their models here, and that's the Wraith. Now this is very nice. It's got the titanium body with uh, all blacked out with the blue hardware. Very nice um, blade shape there. And it's great in hand. It's got great action. And yeah, I think this is something that'll help um, cover the back end on the value of the Menevade because I don't want to take the most expensive out and just put a budget option in. But these together should cover that. And it helped take care of the flipper problem and offer up something. You know, maybe somebody's not looking for a higher end piece, but they're still looking for something in this category. So I don't want the next guy to be, you know, feel like he's handcuffed to some of these other models. And it just gives options. And that's what this is about. So hopefully you don't mind JT that I'm throwing in two knives. I, I think that'll be okay. But so these are the two knives that I'm going to be throwing in. I'm going to be walking away with the Menevade stub. A uh, knife that caught me by surprise that I jokingly said I was going to take, but actually ended up taking. And yeah, so let's take a look at all the knives that are left on the table for the next guy. Alright, there you are. So we have the Dam Design, we have the Real Steel, we have the Browse, we have the Tucson, we have the Ginormous, which doesn't even fit in frame, um, Stedemon, we have the Case, and we have the Concept Knives. There's your, uh, there's your collection, guys, for the next leg of the Give a Knife, Take a Knife. Uh, thanks, JT, for putting this together. Thanks for everyone who's uh, played a part in... Uh, making this collective of knives and stay tuned guys go check out big red channel he's getting this next and um as always thanks for watching if you're wondering about the flashlight video it's coming um there were some software issues but those have been fixed so i'm hurrying up on the back end to uh finish up with my editing but yeah there you are guys 
Um, as always, I gotta do my thing. Let's move some of these. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time. Later, guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's tune into this up. No. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. No. Nope. <laughs> and. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. Welcome back to this episode of Gap Tech!